All right. Um, greetings to you again, students. We were discussing on our previous lesson, lesson number six, the different types of tours. It's important to know the different types of tours because in an examination, an examiner may say, give perhaps five different types of tours that you know of and explain each one of those. And uh, it can be it can be quite a lot of marks which you cannot really afford to lose. All right. So I, I now hope and believe as a matter of must that we now understand these types of tours. They're quite important. Now we move on to 1.3 places of interest. Um, that is on your page 48 of your TBEC first textbook. Places of interest, festivals in specific regions and country gateways or gateways. Now, we do know that uh, there are a variety of places of interest that our clients would really dream of visiting, you know. Now, when planning a specific tour, you need to ask yourself the following questions. You are planning a tour. Remember, I've said it at the beginning of this course that I am in a process of training travel consultants. As a travel consultant, what are your duties? What are you expected um, uh, uh, of doing? What are you expected to do, in, in other words? So you are indeed expected to plan design tours, put together packages, sell those packages to, 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 to your clients. You are expected to receive clients, solve clients' problems, get to know what is it that they are interested in, what will be their dream uh, uh, destinations, and on all those um, intrinsics that are quite 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 fundamental in as far as the travel consultancy is concerned. When planning a specific tour, you need to ask yourself the following questions. What are the questions that you need to ask yourself? How much time will my group need if it's a group or if it's an individual or if it's a couple? Time is very important. How much time will my group need to visit this attraction? Now, you do not guess this information. You will obviously get it from your very clients. Is this the best timing to see the attraction? Is it the best time? Okay. So, what this question means is, um, will they see what they want to see? Okay. We do know that some attractions get to have seasons. In summer, you cannot visit the attraction. You can only visit the attraction in winter for the best uh, uh, experience or vice versa. Will you need to tell the group about the attraction? Is there an admission fee involved? Sorry, there's a spelling error there. But these are the questions that you need to understand and these are the questions that you need to ask yourself in making sure that you produce the best product for your clients. Once you have decided on a destination, remember students, we spoke about various sort of things. We spoke about... Um, Methods of payment, the methods that you would advise your clients to use, to make use of when going abroad, or rather when taking Forex out of, out of the country. We spoke about itineraries. Um, we spoke about the different types of itineraries. From itineraries, we spoke about different types of tools, and, 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 and so on. Now we're looking at packaging the tool. The questions that you need to ask yourself, as you can see here. And now, 
Once you have decided on the destination, you must gather information that will guide you in the process of planning an itinerary. Therefore, the following questions must be answered. One, which modes? So now we are dealing with these very intrinsic components of the tour. The components that make up a tour. Without one of these components, there is no tour. We've got to understand that one. Which modes of transport serves the area your clients will be visiting? It's very important. You've got to be... You gotta be um, um, out there. You gotta gather information so that you give your client the best packages ever. Which accommodation can I select, or which hotels can I select? All right. So that's also very important. What attraction I must see? We do have attractions. In a place, if you take your clients to that particular place, you have that one or two attractions that are massy, they are major attractions or they are main attractions. Okay, for example, if you were to take your clients to from overseas, maybe a client from New York or a client from uh, Germany coming to South Africa, which part of South Africa would you take your client? Let's say, for example, you take a client to Gauteng, Johannesburg. In Johannesburg, there are main attractions that will be important for your clients to see. Um, for example, your union buildings in Pretoria, it's a must-see. You know, you would want to take your clients there. Your Villagazi Street in Soweto, it's a must-see. You would want to take your clients there so that they can see Mandela House and Desmond Tutu House. Um, so we have main attractions in a particular area that must be seen. What attraction a must see? Then you answer that question. How much will each tour component cost? Costing students, it's very important. Very important because you need to know, can your clients afford the tour package you have put together? Okay. Then we move on. You can then start research from various publications. So once all these questions from the places of interest to the modes uh, or rather the components of the tour, You've answered all these questions. Now you need to gather information relevant and uh, uh, precise, accurate information is important. We do know that things change, you know, um, like your streets. You get to know that streets have changed, the street names rather have changed. And, and, and the building names have changed. So all that information you need to be updated with as a travel consultant within a travel consultancy. You can then start research from various publications to obtain information you are looking for. This can include sources listed below, such as standard guidebooks, industry publications, brochures, maps and atlases, tourist bureaus, on-site visits, as well as the internet, which is one of the reliable source of information you can use as a travel consultant. Okay. You can also use GSAs, which are not mentioned here. There are way, many ways, rather, in which you can make hotel bookings. Now you are starting, you are starting to be hands-on, you are starting to make your package live, you are starting to make the booking, you know, um, um, you're sitting on it. Number one, you can make accommodation bookings via direct contacting the hotel. Using the hotel central reservation office, hotel representatives, airlines, central reservation system, CRS, Official hotel guide and travel indexes. Okay, some can go as far as using emails, faxes, and so on. 
Hope it's okay. Now, when planning accommodation for a tour and deciding on hotels, you need to consider the following aspects very carefully. One, you need to know how far the hotel is from the shopping areas. We do know that your clients would might want to visit the shopping areas. Maybe they might just like to walk down to the shopping area by not even using uh, whatever mode of transport or vehicle. So make sure that when you book your accommodation, it is close by or it is nearby the shopping areas because your clients might just want to take a walk and make some shopping while at their uh, respective accommodation establishment. How long it takes to get to the airport? Know that very well. How good the restaurant is? And whether certain rooms are more noisy because of a bar or busy road close by. We do know that our clients want peace of mind. So whenever you book them into a certain respective establishment, accommodation for that matter, the room that you will choose for them is a room that is peaceful without, it's uh, rather away from the noisy uh, uh, areas like your bar, your reception, you know, try to book them a room that is away from those facilities because they do not want to be interrupted in as far as noise pollution is concerned. An ideal tour hotel. Now, this is a hotel that is, um, um, that is, what can I say? A hotel that is ideal, okay? It's a, it's, it's a hotel that you can also, as a travel consultant, go there and sleep in that hotel. So it's a hotel you wouldn't even regret sending your clients to. Okay, It's a well-managed and well-staffed. A values group business is strategically located. Strategically located is, is what we have discussed previously, that um, is a hotel close nearby the shopping areas, how far is the airport and so on. So that's what we mean by strategically located. Is relatively new or extremely well maintained. It is always nice to take your clients to a new hotel because everything just smells new. Or a well maintained hotel that is forever new. That's important so that you can always get good compliments from your clients. Has a good atmosphere. That's one of the best things you need to look for whenever choosing for accommodation. You need a hotel that is not, not, not a boring hotel. If you do get what I'm saying, get a hotel that has got this um, magnificent extravagance atmosphere. An atmosphere where there will be mountain view, there will be trees, flowers, nature, you know. Um, so try to look for a specific located hotel in as far as the atmosphere, the view is concerned, okay? So that even the hotel itself is an attraction. Being at the hotel is like a dream to your client. So please keep that in mind as a travel consultant. Is of at least medium size. So don't get a hotel that is too big, okay? We do know that a hotel that is too big gets to be busier, gets to be noisy and all uh, and all that. Don't get a hotel that is small again, okay? But get a hotel that is medium size. All right. So I hope we're together on that note. Let's just stop there.